viewers, I'm so excited today to be here at Robiot Audio. Robin White, how are you? Hi, Peter, please see you, and Terry. We are featuring today the most desirable turntable in the world. Correct. Tell us all about it. Okay, well, apart from Robiot Audio selling uh, the gear that I import from uh, England, Germany, Italy, and Japan, um, I also sell curated used uh, items from the audio world. And this is a very interesting turntable. This is the holy grail of turntables, uh, according to the aficionados. This is the EMT 927. EMT is a German company. They produce these turntables for radio stations and studio work. It is an all-out assault on the state of the art and over-engineered as only the Germans can do in such a way that collectors now look for these tables in the kind of condition this table is in um, because it's really the ultimately built turntable. Um, I acquired this turntable from a young man whose father was a record ear exec from Los Angeles. He bought it new he babied it. He had the cart built for it. Um, it's in the same condition as when he bought it brand new. Um, I've uh, dusted it, oiled it, serviced it, and made sure everything's up and running. So the table came originally with an order form made tone arm for EMT, um, which, and when he got this way back, it came only with Stanton moving magnet cartridges and the tone arm had no um, ability to try other different cartridges. You couldn't move the counterweight. So I removed that tone arm and put on an EMT 929 tone arm. And this tone arm is a little, somewhat unique as this was my very good friend Art Dudley's tone arm. Oh. Art passed away. I purchased his, um, all of his phono cartridges and some of his audio gear and this was one of the pieces in it and it just seemed right to combine it with this fantastic EMT 927 ST idler drive turntable so that's Art's tone arm and on the front end of it is Art's EMT TSD 15 moving coil stereo phono cartridge and over here we have Art's OFD 25i mono phono cartridge and then in uh, an EMT head shell that's labeled Stanton is a Stanton uh, 981 I think uh, moving magnet cartridge so this turntable was meant to be put in radio stations and such turned on and basically never turned off um, it comes with a built-in phono stage um, the unit originally came with a 155 ST solid state moving magnet phono stage. Um, it had an issue. I had it repaired by Studio Technik Deutsch in Germany. It's now functioning perfectly. They replaced all the parts that needed to be taken care of. I also acquired a 155 ST moving coil phono stage, which is in it right now. This one is very unique because it has Neumann V264 step-up transformers in it for the moving coil cartridge. Those those alone can cost you fifteen hundred to two and a half thousand euro. Wow. Um, you can select mono equalization all from here from the uh, phono stage, which is mounted underneath in the chassis that this whole table is fitted in. The table itself is spectacular. It is indeed. The table came with a plexiglass, um, it's in this drawer, a plexiglass m mat. Um, I purchased aftermarket the glass version. There are many people that have different views on which is better. I prefer the glass, but it comes with the original plexi uh, platter as well. It, it comes with all the instructions, uh, reproduced instructions. Um, on servicing and um, ma usage manuals. There's another spare EMT head shell. And here in this drawer, we have the headphone adapter so you can listen to it directly out. It has uh, the cases for the two EMT cartridges, 
the parts that were replaced in this EMT 155ST moving magnet and uh, the box to Art Dudley's uh, EMT 929 car. This car came in full mica. I had it pref professionally restored by a uh, furniture uh, maker, a uh, bespoke furniture maker. This is all done in ebony now. New casters, new knobs, Beautiful. it's pristine. The turntable works beautifully. And just to give a demonstration of how this table is built, I'm going to take off the glass platter and set it down here. And just to show you how over-engineered this table is. Look at that platter. It's unbelievable. It's rubber damped to stop ringing. Look at the size of the bearing. The, and not just the size of the bearing, I don't know if it's possible, Peter, oh, to get down. a... Yeah. Yes, we'll show you the size of the motor. Uh, it's it's just an incredible turntable. There are very few... There actually is no other turntable built like this. I mean, I know there's some modern, very expensive tech das tables now, but in reality, they're still not engineered like this was. The amount of money that went into producing this back when, in those days... R&D development was in a different league than it is today. Okay. Wow. Now, the table can be used. When I mounted the EMT 929 tone arm, I made a decision to add one extra thing to it, which isn't standard, and those are RCA outs for the tone arm. So this tone arm can run directly into your phono stage, or with the fly leads that are incorporated in the back, you can use either of the EMT phono stages that comes with it. Um, so that kind of makes it a little more <laughs> interesting to try and compare how and see what you prefer. Um, there are a couple of things that uh, this table can have added to it if you wanted to do it, but I have not done it because after much research and studying, the um, display that goes here that's connected to the tone arm mechanism uh, it was a gauge that showed four radio stations where the needle was across the record that can be added it's not cheap but i've read too many reports about them being disabled by 927 owners because it actually deteriorates the sound of the table so I um, I have not added it to it and also there is another phono stage available for this table called the nine the 139 and it's a tube based moving magnet phono stage um, if someone wants to get it they can it does 33 and a third 45 and 78 you have a light here for queuing look at that and there it goes gosh it's kind of nice, something I'm not used to, as a lift lever, automatic lift lever. It has a stop so the tone arm can never go winging across and damage your needle. It even has a little rubber roll bar here for rolling your tone arm back. I mean, they've thought of everything with this. Um, you can put Audiphon SPUAs on this tone arm. The ar uh, arm box contains the other um, counterweights that will be required for that. It's very easy to switch to mono just by taking out your cartridge and switching heads and going to selecting mono on the phono stage. So it really is the st state of the art, holy grail of turntables. Well, we're going to listen to it in just a moment, viewers. Uh, you're going to join in on a listening session. Uh, before we do that, well, Robin, what's the rest of the system we have here? I see a Tektron amplifier over here. We're using a brand new Tektron 211 integrated amplifier. Uh, it's his reference line. It has uh, bias meters. You're able to bias the diff different 211s if you change them. Right now, there's a pair of Chinese Pervain uh, 211s in there. Um, I have the new uh, um, Kozor 211s, which actually sound a little better in there. They're not in there at the moment. Um, it's a 22 watts pure triode. Beautiful. And then the speakers we're listening to this time, Klipsch again, as I'm yeah, the Klipsch Heritage these. dealer. These are the Cherry Klipsch Lascalas. So 
smaller than the K-horns, more room friendly, not as quite as deep a bass, not the quite dyna the dynamics of the K-horns, but in the right room, every bit as exciting, dynamic, and as you are there as the K-horns. Um, just a beautiful speaker. The finish is stunning. They're all book match veneers as Klipsch does. Um, very, very impressive speaker as well. Well, we shot the music sessions just prior to us doing this interview now, and uh, they have an extremely wide sound stage to them. Yes, absolutely. They're very, they, you know, <laughs> Klipsch does you are there like no other speakers I know. There are speakers that do more detail, that are more refined, but if you just want to be transported to the performance of whatever LP or digital file you play, these speakers do it better than anything else. Um, their dynamics, their involvement, their get up and go and jump factor are like no others. Mm -hmm. And they're made in the USA, mm -hmm. It's the oldest speaker company still in production, 70 plus, odd years. Um, and relatively speaking to the price of high-end audio these days, they're reasonably priced. Mm -hmm. These La Scalas are 12,000. The Klipsch horns that uh, you saw in my previous video, uh, our previous video are 15,000. I mean, a lot of money. But compared with the 100,000 plus speakers that are out there today that may do some things better, but I guarantee you won't have as much fun as you have with these. They are super fun. <laughs> yes. Well, let's go do some listening, and then we're going to report back. Uh, we'll sum up what we heard earlier, uh, and uh, you're in for a treat. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Terry. Always good to see you. Good. Here we go. Let's listen. <laughs>
this system, it's got that exciting detail, but it's got a warmth to it too. So you get like the best of both worlds. And I've never heard an EMT turntable before. <laughs> In fact, viewers, and this, just a side note, I've dreamed about this turntable, tur a big transcription turntable, and the old records that used to fit on that turntable. And this is the first time I've seen it in real life. And I wish I had a spot for this turntable in my listening room because it's yeah, just it is just freaking awesome. Be it is a beast of a table. But I, as we were filming, Peter, I sat here and realized you could put a beautiful integrated amp under that cart, and that's your whole system mm -hmm. right there. Because mm -hmm. it's got the built-in phono stage. So if you put, I don't know, a Viva or a, an ASR, just the, the main unit under there, or even the Tektron on an amp stand under there, that's your whole system, just in one space. And it's a legend. It is a For legend. a reason. Well, you know, we heard Itzhak Perlman. Uh, he was in the room with us. I mean, my goodness gracious, we played Vincent Belager on the yes. cello in the, the first track. My goodness gracious, you could hear the... Oh, the the, awesome the rim of the bow, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, it was and awesome. the tonality of his incredible cello. I just, agree, just incredible, yeah, just incredible, yeah. And then the jazz track, well, wow, beautiful. Now, you know, the folks, who yeah, that's that Nick Culp. I mm -hmm. was turned on to that record by Michael Fremer. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nick's a great guy, and uh, uh, that record is as bad as dynamic as any recording I've heard. And on these speakers, you think you're in the club where he's playing that. You could hear, the, I mean, the drum solo was, you were there, yep, Harry, man. absolutely. Bam, you were right there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that yeah, vice that bite, impact yeah, 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 on yeah. your chest, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, this is surely a treat, uh, opportunity of a lifetime to hear what the world's most desirable turntable. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, one someone can contact me. This is up for sale. Okay. And... Um, we can talk about it. Well, thank you very much, Robin, for uh, continuing on a company tour here at Robiot Audio in Pennsylvania, USA. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you for you and Terry for taking the trip to the Poconos. Thank you. Bye-bye.